And I said before, if it was another community somewhere else, it would not happen. As MP, I'm saying it's because you're not speaking on your behalf. But where rich people live, where affluent people live, effluent don't reach there. No. It doesn't reach there, mm -hmm. right? And it can if it reach once, it now reach twice. Much more five times. We were so clean and nice. Everybody used to live from damage, come all flat, bagua, yeah. and survive our fight. No, everything. Mash up. Mash up. Yeah. And a couple of times, we it up. Yeah. We clean it already, nobody get nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. We clean the tree system, nothing. And now we clean the again. Well, so, there before the court. The court. For, the yeah, 20, yeah, yeah. for the 2019 one. Yes. Yeah. And that trial is going on. But you know, the maximum penalty is. 50,000 Jamaican dollars okay. for a multinational yes. company damaging the environment. Okay. There's another case, I believe, for a 2020 spill. Yes. And then there was one last year, and now one, sure. this wicked one now. Okay. So it's been going on and on and on. Yes, it has. And yeah, it, it has to stop. Yeah, man, it, and, it, and I personally yeah. feel that like NEPA has been delinquent in yes. how they've treated this matter <laughs> because they have not taken any serious action. Yeah, Criminal together. proceedings on the NRC Act is not going to stop. Clearly, it's not stopping the thing because the people are just dragging it out, okay. and the, and the, the, the penalties are minuscule. Yeah. And we have been calling on the government to amend the NRC Act to impose meaningful and strict yeah. penalties for this type of environmental calamity yeah, and causing it. Yeah, but they have not. They've dragged their feet. Nothing has been done. No. And we say to them, they are licensed by NEPA. NEPA must take action under the license yeah. to ensure that they fix it and not just avoid something at this scale, avoid any further release to the environment. Exactly. It must be a self-contained system to deal with the problem that they have and they cannot be inflicting it on the environment and what this has shown is how vulnerable we are as a country because you are, you are here, you are at the epicenter of the problem here but it is a wide problem yeah, goes from way up by your town right down in, and even kingston because people are suffering water lack of right now as a result of this yes man. Mm -hmm. so we're gonna have to find a way of quantifying in a realistic way the losses and damage suffered by communities along here yeah um to put a reasonable verifiable total yeah and the culprits should be forced to yeah, compensate man and fix, remediate. Environmental issues are going to be increasingly important in the era of climate change, in the era of global warming, in the era of food insecurity, and we need to have proper environmental regulation to balance Water security. development, sustainable development, with protecting our natural assets on which the people survive. So farmers who depend on irrigation and fish farmers are impacted and are suffering losses. Folk along here, the fisher folk and others, who use it for recreation, suffering losses. The water supply, the National Water Commission has not been able to provide water from this source. 500,000 households in three parishes negatively impacted. This cannot go on any longer. I have received an offer um, from a fish farmer, a very generous offer to provide a large quantity of fishlings to restart the river, subject to NEPA. And uh, I think the fisheries division saying they're okay with it and I've asked Senator Fraser Bins to follow up with those two agencies to, so that we can dialogue and make sure that we can go ahead. He's offered not only to provide the seedlings but to transport them here and to assist with them being put in the river to help restart. But they can't restart till the river's flushed. I yeah, think it's yeah. going to need some heavy rain to cleanse it and so on. Yeah. But after that it's going to be very important that it be restarted so that the livelihood of these people is not permanently impaired. They have indicated that they expect it to be a year before their river is restocked adequately, assuming that the, the, the fishlings can be put into the river soon. Well, I think in addition to the environmental concerns, there are concerns which are far-reaching, health implications. Um, when the effluent is released, long before the spillage gets down here, other persons are notified, but the residents of the communities are not notified. So when the effluent is up there, people are still downstream fishing mm -hmm. at the same time. The same fish running away from the effluent, right? So we have no idea what the health implications are. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what the long-term effects will be um, on, on pregnant women with children. Nobody has any idea. Mm -hmm. And years to come, when we, when we hear of this, 
what will happen? What will be the redress for those persons? Mm -hmm. um, the truth is the Bureau of Standards needs to do a separate testing mm -hmm. of the water outside of what NWC will do and outside of what um, the Ministry of Health will do. I would love for there to be some independent testing of the water and of the citizens who have shown these health concerns over the years and to probably perhaps develop a correlation, if there is any, between what is happening in this water and their health over time. The truth is the NWC was alerted once the spillage took place based on the conversation I heard with Mr. Cannon on radio yesterday. So though they were alerted prior to or just about when the release was taking place, because it's not a spillage anymore. No, it's not spillage. It's a release. It's, 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 a, release. it's, 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 it's a planned release when you get to a certain place. Once it gets to a certain place, it can't stay on the property. It has to go somewhere. And Nepo is aware that the only place for it to go is in the river. So you can alert the people. You can, just in the same way you alerted the NWC, there should have been equal effort or greater effort to, allow the pe to alert the people who live along the banks of the river. Yeah, but the, the bigger point is that going forward, this must not be allowed to happen again. There must be no release of this toxic waste yes. into the river mm. again. It must be either it must be treated so it is fully neutralized before there's any release. And right. until then it must be dealt with through a proper system of managing waste. That exists, it may cost some money, but the people who own the plant have plenty of money. And I said before, if it was another community somewhere else, it wouldn't happen. And as MPM said it's because either I'm not speaking on your behalf. But where rich people live, where affluent people live, effluent don't reach there. No. Right. It doesn't reach there, mm -hmm. right? And it can, if it reached once, it now reach twice. Much more five times, mm -hmm. right? So I'm saying to you, yeah. treat the poor just as if you would treat anybody else. The Jamaicans, law-abiding citizens who need to be treated with respect. One of the things that we've been exploring is the possibility of perhaps a tribunal that is set up to deal with environmental issues because this is just one of the many environmental issues that we have to face day to day. I mean, just this week, there was another issue in St. Thomas regarding sand mining. How do we treat with it? And yes, the penalties are low. You go to court, but the court jurisdiction is still limited as to how much money can be given. So unless the matter can be treated in a higher court, then the financial redress is still, um, it's still very limited and insignificant. So what we're thinking is that perhaps the time has really come for there to be a special tribunal I wouldn't say a court, but a special tribunal that looks at environmental issues, not only because of the financial redress that is required, but also because of the timeliness within which environmental issues must be dealt with. The government has announced its intention to call on the bond, which is commendable. But the fact of the matter is, what the government needs to do is to go beyond just saying it's going to call on the bond. There has to be transparency and openness as to how the funds will be distributed. We need to know how it is going to be distributed. We need to know who are the persons that are going to get, who are the entities that are going to get, and the order in which it is to be done. Um, a hundred process. million dollars really is not that significant when one considers the effect on the farming community, when one considers the effect on the fishing folk and their loss of income, and how many which will people? continue at least for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. So one of the two things we are calling for, one is that there's transparency and openness in terms of how the funds will be distributed. And secondly, that we ensure that the community is at the heart of this and to ensure that those who are most affected are the ones who stand to benefit first. The community must have a seat at the table. Absolutely.